Does your penis get numb when you ride? No, I never bring out though. <laughs> I always wonder, with the nature of our sport, where we have to sit on the saddles for such many hours, and given how thin and hot our saddles are, does it not cause any short-term or long-term damage to men's private part? Unfortunately or fortunately, I don't possess the relevant organs. I literally have to ask around my male friends and also my followers on Instagram. And with the questions and their concerns that I've collected, I am going to interview a urologist who happens to be an Iron Man to answer these questions. Welcome to the other episode of Terra Ask. In this series, I'll be interviewing different cyclists and asking questions that you want to know. So today, my guest is Dr. Bajo. Number one questions that I got is they are very concerned about the numbness in their private parts. Predominantly on their testicles, sometimes it's penis. Especially after either a long ride or a tough climb. It's either they couldn't feel it anymore, even when they're urinating, or they couldn't see it. Because it shrinks so much that they couldn't find it. <laughs> Okay, so this numbness is, has got to do with a nerve, well, nerves that travel around the perineal area. The perineal area is the bottom area, mm -hmm. yeah, or the pudendal nerve. All of us have sit bones and show you this part of the body. These structures are called ischial tuberosities, better known as sit bones. So when we are sitting on a, an, on a normal chair like this, we are actually putting pressure on this part of the body, of the bone. If you imagine if you have a, a narrow saddle, the pressure is then transmitted more towards the centre. Mm -hmm. And this is the area where all the nerves and blood vessels and muscles and urine tubes are travelling. Mm -hmm. So yeah, logically speaking, uh, there will be some, some issues such as uh, numbness. Having a wider saddle would help. I suppose uh, having your sit bones sitting on the wider part of the saddle and having this cut out at the centre that can help ease the pressure at the centre where all those uh, nerves and blood vessels are, are running. There are other factors that are involved like the duration of the cycle, the type of roads that you take, mm. the type of bikes that you ride. People who ride on triathlon bikes are sitting in a tough position. They are the ones who tend to put a lot more pressure on okay. their perineum. It's normal to have it. Some people do have it more than others. If you're not experiencing uh, numbness, you're not been cycling enough, I suppose. <laughs> I guess the question now is how okay is okay? Does it lead towards long-term issue that men are concerned about? Would um, cycling cause them to have permanent erectile dysfunction, static issues such as inflamed prostate, prostate cancer, or cause them to have infertility? So are those concerns valid? And the simple answer is actually all these concerns are not found to be true. I can say that it's a myth because uh, as of now, I don't think anyone can prove that with absolute certainty that there is a direct correlation. Mm. So if a cyclist is suspecting himself having erectile dysfunction, probably cycling shouldn't be the number one thing that they think that it's the culprit. They should not. Male around the age of 40 to 70, the proportion who suffers from say erectile dysfunction can be as high as 50% and it could be multifactorial due to other more common reasons. Like cardiovascular disease being one, to disrupted blood supply to the penile structures. It could also be hormonal effect, you know, testosterone, it could be due to other diseases that can affect the function of nerve and blood vessels, notably diabetes. So those things are much more common, strongly correlated with erectile dysfunction, yeah, as opposed to, say, cycling. Cycling actually will help with that. Yeah, cycling has been shown that uh, it's a type of cardiovascular exercise yeah. that can help reduce the incidence and the risk of uh, all these uh, common, uh, non-communicable diseases. But I think you need uh, professionals to assess you in order for you to ascertain whether is it the cycling or is it other things. Interestingly, I have friends who told me that ever since they pick up cycling, they have better sexual performance, increased sexual desire as well. I think it's got to do with the general feeling of being cardiovascular fit. So, so would getting a good fit solve this problem once and for all? Yeah, all these risks can be mitigated. Mm -hmm. One way is getting a good bike fit. Mm -hmm. It's essential to ensure that you have good posture and you're not exposing yourself to not just numbness but injuries to your knees and your back for instance. And choosing the right type of saddle. Remembering that if you ease the pressure down there by riding out of the saddle, that would greatly help. There are ways to get around it. Yes. 
cyclists, we wear very tight cycling feet. Mm. Does it affect the sperm quality? It does have an impact, but not to the extent that it will reduce your paternity rate. Because you just need that one mm. to make it happen? Yeah, yeah you do need a okay. army of sperm. <laughs> It's not something that is going to be a permanent, it's probably reversible. If you do have issues, take a cycling holiday for a while and your sperm quality should improve. So just to reassure, patients who have been seeing us are never from the cyclist community. Yeah. Is cycling associated with formation of kidney stones? No, but being dehydrated or a hypersaturated urine can be a risk towards uh, stone formation. As a urologist, who would you advise against cycling? My advice would be if a person is having any form of urinary tract infection, they would probably want to abstain from cycling until they get better. Cycling for a prolonged period of time will make them visit the toilet less and so they hold urine much longer and they can just make things worse. There are some male who are diagnosed with prostatitis they should abstain from cycling for the duration of the antibiotic therapy. It can be quite long, talking about possibly two to six weeks. Other than that, I can't think of anything else. The benefits of cycling, of course, they far outweighs the risk. Today, we are just only talking about the risk and how do we mitigate the risk so all of us can enjoy cycling better. Thank you for watching and thank you, Dr. Bajo. Thank you. Yes.